what they teach in cosmetology school is that the more products you sell, the more money you'll make. This is a terrible business idea. I've got a bone to pick with you. I've seen so many business owners lately have momentum, they're rolling, they're doing great in business, and then they see a new idea. And they pursue that idea, gung-ho about it, like it's gonna work, like it's the silver bullet that just kills the werewolf, and you're done, and it doesn't work. Why? There's something called the emotional cycle of change. I'm gonna put it up on the screen and I'll walk you through it. If you don't understand this, this will change the way, you, first of all, you live life and the way you run your business. So when somebody is in business, they'll run and they'll get momentum. Most business owners can figure it out at the very beginning and then they lack some focus to keep moving. And so they'll see Johnny on the other side of the street where he's doing something great. He'll put out a guy dressed as a panda holding a sign in front of his store. And it works for him and he's done it and he's figured out what to say on the sign and he's figured out how to make sure you hire the right person because he dances better as a panda, whatever. But then you look at him and you go, Johnny, what are you doing? Your business looks like it's thriving. And Johnny says, well, I have a panda guy. He holds my sign out in front of my store. He's great. Maybe you should try that. And then they say, oh, that's a great idea. And first of all, just as a caveat, like. Johnny doesn't know if the panda made the difference. He doesn't know. Likely, it's not true. But then you go into something that's called uninformed optimism. Meaning, you see Panda Guy with the sign, and you think, oh, Johnny's doing great with his business. All I have to do is just get a guy in a panda costume and make him hold a sign that says, buy here, and we're good. I'll start booming in business again. And so he starts hiring for this panda. And what he realizes is that getting to some, getting someone to wear a panda suit in front of your store is a little bit harder than you thought. We call this informed pessimism. You started the idea, you went for it, you took action, and you realize it's not as easy as you thought it would be. You realize there's so many nuances in this that you couldn't have possibly known what all these nuances. You didn't know what you didn't know before you got into this idea. So you started the idea and it doesn't work because panda guy with a sign is not a great business model. And so you finally found the guy stupid enough to wear a panda costume in front of your store and you make him hold a sign that says buy here. And what happens? Nothing. All that happens is you had to overpay him because nobody wants to wear a panda sign, especially when they look at somebody across the street with another panda sign. And as you overpay, nothing comes into your business. We call this the valley of despair. So you've done the work, you've actually started to take action on it. The idea is moving, but nothing is working. Why? Because Johnny is a panda sign pro. You are not. There is a level of skill that it takes. He knows to put what to put on the sign, who to put in the costume, where to put him on the street, what time of day to put him out in front of the store. He knows all these things and you don't. And so you get into something called the Valley of Despair. And so you're stuck there. Now, I'm gonna roll back a little bit because most people fail at informed pessimism. Most people will try an idea and think that's cool and realize it's a little bit harder than they thought and they'll quit. Now, you are an entrepreneur. You are not most people. And so you keep going and you get past informed pessimism into the valley of despair where nothing's working. You're bleeding your business dry on an idea that you were somewhat optimistic about. Then you see Susan's business across town. Susan's business across town doesn't have a panda guy. It has a neon sign. And she made this neon sign custom to her business and she is thriving. We're talking lines out the door. So you assume that, and Susan assumes that when she put the neon sign in front of her door, that people started coming, the lines started. And so you're like, huh, I'm gonna do the neon sign too. So you fire Panda Guy, you throw the sign away, you custom order a neon sign. And by this time you're pretty much ready. You have to ha turn a profit on this. This is your last dish, ditch effort. 
and you realize ordering the signs a little harder, it costs a little bit more, and you start to see this again, informed pessimism, the valley of despair, and you just repeat this process over and over. Now, those who succeed are a little bit different. Those who succeed see a working idea that is likely old. The reason why I say that is because the things that work forever work forever. The things that work, that have worked in the past will likely work in the future, especially if they've existed for a long time. And so those that succeed, they move from the valley of despair over to informed optimism. They pushed past the valley of despair. They found the skill they needed to, to make PandaSign work, only not PandaSign, something else. Probably email marketing or paid advertising, something basic, something rudimentary in business. And they go to informed optimism where things starting to work. I'm starting to get sales through ads and they keep going. And that's the difference. All they do is they say, I've gotten, people in from paid ads and I'm just going to crush paid ads. I'm not going to look at Susan across, across town. I'm not going to look at Johnny across the street. I'm going to do my thing. My thing. That is when people go to the end of this cycle to success and fulfillment. Most people don't get there because most people don't want to focus. Now I have a friend. We'll call her Susan. She went to cosmetology school. And what they teach in cosmetology school is that the more products you sell, the more money you'll make. This is a terrible business idea. So if you have a business and you have any sort of product, it's likely that one product sells more than the others. And then you just keep adding product and adding product because you have this shiny object syndrome of Susan's selling this, Johnny's selling this, Susan's doing merch with her brand and Johnny is selling hats which is the same thing, but I want to do that too. And so you add all of this product and what are you doing every time you add or change anything in your business? It's a cost. There is a number one, an opportunity cost, but number two, a cost of change. And so you cannot run your business like a cosmetologist because what a cosmetologist will do is she will get hair cutting. Cool. And then she'll add hair dyeing. Cool. And then, she, oh, well, let's sell this hairspray that keeps your hair dye in longer. Cool. Okay. So I got to order more of those. And then, okay. Uh, I think I'll do highlights now instead of just like dyeing it one color. And then I've got to get this highlight kit. So I'll pay for that. Every time you make this change, every time you add a new product, it adds another cost to it. All it does is confuse your customer and add cost to your business. And so those who succeed are the ones who focus. The top 75 richest people in the world focused on one thing until it worked and then they diversified after. And so you want to do the same. If you want to be in that space, focus on one thing, diversify after, after you succeed in that one thing, after you went through the whole process through the valley of despair into success and fulfillment. You don't want to fragment your business like a cosmetologist because you'll end up stuck there. You'll end up trying to offset the costs that you're acquiring because you're trying to add all these different products to your business and you'll get stuck in this cycle of, oh, well, it sold a few times, so I should get more and that adds more costs, so I have to offset it and I'm just stuck. Trying to be everything to everyone pushes you into irrelevance and it makes you become nothing to no one. So please, focus. Be an entrepreneur, not a cosmetologist.